ones is is our is our GPS system is going to be discussed. I'll say a little bit about it, and then you know I know these other fellows here are also very well familiar with uh, iPhones and GPS devices. There are quite a few GPS devices that are bantered about on the iPhones list uh, as being touted as the best. The one that a lot of people use and that I use a lot is called Navigon, N-A-V-I-G-O-N. And um, the really cool thing about Navigon is it's pretty much, I'd say, 95, 99% accessible. You can enter your destination. It'll give you turn-by-turn -turn directions in a car uh, and in pedestrian mode. I haven't used that mode yet because um, I make sure everywhere I go, I'm getting driven somewhere. <laughs> Just not too many places around where I live to walk. But uh, also, I'm a little lazy. But there is a pedestrian mode that you can set to that will give you turn-by-turn -turn directions uh, as you walk. Garmin has an iPhone app. That's also pretty accessible called Street Pilot. There's one called Tom Tom, which is also pretty accessible. Some people use that. Magellan, uh, Magellan has one. Oh, Voxtrek. There's a number of them. And then there are also a number of add-on applications. For example, Sendero Group, which is known for making GPS applications for the blind, has a program called Look Around that will allow you to determine your inter intersection and points of interest in the area. There are other programs like that called Where I'm, Am I? There's a couple called Where the Hell Am I? I use that one. It works very well. <laughs> There's a brand new one out there now called Ariadne, oh, yeah. which is a lot of fun to use. Oh, yes. One of the things people have really been begging for is an application which would actively track your location and call out street names, uh, especially if you take buses, you know, and you want to make sure as you're approaching your stop, you get to the right street and everything. So Ariadne actually does a lot of that. You can be sitting in a car. It'll tell you what addresses you're passing as you turn on or cross different streets. It'll speak the names of the streets uh, for you. And it's just a lot of fun to use. Some people use that in conjunction it's up, there's a question. What's, sure. What's up? I said, can you spell that, please? Yeah, I have it here. It's A R I A D N E. Thank you. Yeah, there was some Greek mythological being that was something about a desert island and got lost. And I, I don't know, there's a whole story behind it, and I can't remember the, all the details, but. You know, I think this is designed to keep you from getting lost and eaten by the monster or something like that. So um, it's very cool. And some people are using that with programs like Navigon so that not only are you getting your turn by turn directions, but you're also getting interim announcements from Ariadne or Look Around, for example, telling you the streets you're crossing uh, or the points of interest that are in the area. Another application which I got, which is a little bit unrelated, but not totally, is the Talking Maps from APH, which runs on the PC. And it's not a GPS app. You can actually plot routes on your computer because uh, it gives you maps for all the whole country in Canada. Um, and you can then plot routes on the computer and actually put them into Braille so that if you're going, you know, different places and you want to uh, have a pre planned route. But Navigon will do the same thing on the iPhone. You can actually simulate a route even if you have no GPS coverage and it'll play back all the instructions and, and I think even show you a list of turn-by-turn -turn instructions as well. So a lot of blind folks use GPS on the iPhone uh, and the Android as well. In, in all fairness, the Android uh, has a number of accessible GPS applications. I don't know much about them because I don't use Android, but I do know that other people do, and they work quite well. How much is Navigon? Uh, how mu the question is, how much is Navigon? There are different versions of it. There's some for North America. You can get different regions of the United States. Sometimes it's on sale. I've seen it go anywhere from $20 to $40 or $50, yeah. depending on which 
states or areas you buy. I bought the whole North American content, I think, for $49. But then I had just missed a sale that it had been available for $25. So oh. it really, really depends. But I mean, it's certainly a lot better than five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars that you might play pay for a uh, a blindness developed product, you know, um, because these products are developed for everyone. The market is so much larger; the price can come down, and we all benefit from it. Let me set the expectations you know. here a little bit, if I may. I have a question. Okay, we haven't we haven't uh, well. Okay, so before your question, um, we have. Yeah, just a quick comment. I'll make it brief. Um, the the things that these expensive apps, or, or I should say these devices for the blind that provide you that I have not seen an iPhone app provide is the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, 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 the pedestrian feedback that you would require as a blind person. Um, the apps that we're talking about have been designed primarily for the driver. So don't expect any of those apps to tell you that you are approaching such and such an intersection, that you are on such and such a street, and you know the intersection is 90 feet away or whatever. That um, is not reliably available on the iPhone. I think the ones that come close are the Sendero and the Ariadne, and they have their own sort of quirks. But uh, unfortunately, these apps, although go a long way and help out do not totally eliminate the need for the tracker and for the um, uh, GPS node. Okay, so, all right, so you, to your question? Yes, um, I would like to have a question. Okay, can, sorry, would you be able to repeat your question for me? Yeah, my question is, I use uh, Navigon a lot. You use Navigon a lot. Okay, so, um, so just real, so real quick. So if I can, if I'm able to sum this up, there's a, um, if I'm able to sum this up, there's a, um, the the gentleman was having, the gentleman was trying to find a location using a zip code in Baltimore, having and was having, and he was entering the zip code of the of the address he was given, um, but Navigon was giving him in was giving him different information, different outputs with different zip codes. And when he tried going to those zip codes, um, they were incorrect and he was lost. Um, but, and Navigon will not take the zip code he was given. And I guess he's at, you, he, the last thing he said was, can somebody help me? And I don't, you know, just sort of acting as mediator here, I don't think we could speak for what, um, for, Navigon's accuracy. It's just a, it's just another tool folks use. The only thing you want to be aware of, um, and I've run this through this once, where I work at the Library of Congress, uh, my zip code, as is on our correspondence, is 20540. Um, with the Postal Service, it's 20003. And that's because we include our mail stop. So you want to watch for that. That's the only thing I can think of. And you also want to be sure um, sometimes the zip code information is out of date um, that you're given or that Navigon might have. So definitely double check the address and, and double check its accuracy. Uh, make sure it's north or south. That sometimes makes a, a little bit of difference. But, um, you know, beyond that, like Chris said, we, we really can't, you know, beyond these points, 
there's not a lot this we could do. Being recorded. Wait, okay. So, so I mean, so a, a suggestion as well. I've never used zip code on those navigation devices just for that simple reason. You can't rely on them. Just put in the address and rely on that, that machine to just do the address, and it'll get you there. Okay, so the so another piece of advice was just not to re, not to include the zip code, well, just not to, to rely on the zip code. not to rely on the zip code and not to include it when you're entering the address, because maybe the zip code would be would is what's throwing off the navigation system. Um, and also, if I could just add something, you know, Apple has updates on its App Store all the time, so it may be it may be appropriate to look to monitor those updates and see if. I want to say one yeah. quick thing, and then I want to turn it over to. Uh, to Zuhara, but I went to the beach two, three years ago with someone and some nice person who was visiting offered to drive me home. Uh, it should have taken maybe two and a half, three hours at the most, and it took eight and a half hours. Oh, my God. Where did they go? And she was so hopelessly lost, missed the Bay Bridge, and we ended oh. up in North Delaware. Oh. And oh my. I, you know, I sat there just feeling very badly because I couldn't assist. Of course, I couldn't drive, although maybe I should have. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, we know it would have been a quick trip wherever you go. <laughs> yeah, back to the ocean. <laughs> but not be where you want to go. <laughs> right. So I have since getting, you know, Navigon, and I had the same experience with Wayfinder and other GPS apps I've used, of really being the backseat blind guy, blind driver, who was helping the driver <laughs> navigate. I agree. And it has been one of the most rewarding, <laughs> exciting, thrilling, fun experiences to be able to tell a sighted person where to go. And I mean that in the nicest possible way. <laughs>